can we say that we are, as a society, a patriarchy? While at the same time asserting that we are, as a society, a matriarchy. It all goes down to levels, right? On what level are we examining our ourselves, I guess, as a species? Um, what are we looking at? Are we looking at women and children into the lifeboats first? Um, are we looking at men who are less men because they didn't place their very bodies between mortal danger and women and children? Um, are we looking at what actually happens when all the rules fall apart and people just think in terms of brute survival? Um, or are we looking at it being Earth Day? Are we looking at the world in terms of nurturing, mothering, um, succoring, supporting, loving, this sort of thing? Um, what is the world? What are we? What is power? Is power in, in your ability to force your will onto someone else against their will? Or is power the ability to make people want to do what you want? It's the uh, old dichotomy of Brave New World versus 1984. 1984 was built thoroughly on coercion. And Brave New World was built upon the pleasure principle. Both were implied to be equally dystopian and equally undesirable. Um, but one consists of power as violence. The other one consists of power as pleasure. And specifically, the ability to withhold it. Um, you have to remember that my Nick here, my moniker, is Anekantavad, and in the philosophy of Anekantavada, or Saptabhangi, um, things can be true, even if contradictory, on different levels. In some ways, we're a patriarchy. In some ways, we're a matriarchy. In some ways, we're both patriarchy and matriarchy, and in some ways, we're not we're neither, um, etc. It all depends on the perspective you examine things from. Um, John Roberts left a very good quote, and I'm just going to repeat it verbatim on my previous video, or a very good comment, I should say. I think we should stop thinking in terms of patriarchy and matriarchy insofar as those words imply male and female hierarchical dominance and start seeing things in terms of a combination of the two. Combination, not fusion, combination. Perhaps equiarchy, where each gender is in fact a synergistic, in a synergistic equilibrium with the other despite surfaces, surface appearances and where complementary overlapping gender roles exist, despite the seemingly fixed nature of things. Perhaps we should stop seeing it in terms of the genders having to play by the rules of patriarchy and see it as individuals of both genders simply playing according to their own rules. Now, this is a wonderful way to put and to clarify um, kind of what I was getting at. In fact, I would say he's gone a step further than I have. He's done better than what I've been able to do. Um, does one have to obviate the other? Does the law of non-contradiction apply to humans? I don't think that it does. We are a mass of contradictions. And I don't think we couldn't not be a mass of contradictions. We can be two things simultaneously. Um, are we going to say that human behavior makes any sense at all? Um, 
I would say that it doesn't, at least in terms of logic. Um, and I think that a lot of people sort of misapply things like non-contradiction to human behavior. We can be both at once, uh, just on different levels, perhaps in some ways on the same level. I think that it's this whole idea of good evil and the desire to homogenize that may be causing the problem. Um, because once you start judging one attribute as good and one attribute as evil, well, look what happens. You start judging one human as good and another one as evil. What was it that uh, Heinrich Heine said? When you start by burning books, you end up by burning people. I think that that's more or less inherent in any sort of moralistic view of gender. <laughs>